On the last day of election campaigning in Uttarakhand, Chief Minister Pushkar Singh Dhami announced that the BJP government, if re-elected, will constitute a committee to draft a uniform civil code. Of course, the debate around a UCC isn't new and Dhami isn't the first politician to promise a UCC too. So in today's KYC episode, let me take you through what the constitution says on having on a UCC and what sort of changes it would bring if ever it turns into a reality. Now we know that the constitution mentions the Uniform Civil Code in Article 44. It says, and I quote, the state shall endeavor to secure for the citizens a uniform civil code throughout the territory of India. But there's a catch. Article 44 is a part of the directive principles of state policy. The point is that while the government is duty bound to apply these directive principles in making laws, you can't approach the court to enforce these directive principles. In contrast, to make it clearer, if the UCC was under the fundamental rights section, anybody could have approached the court asking for its enforcement. But since it is a part of the director principles of state policy instead, this cannot be done. And the parliament hasn't brought in a UCC so far as well. Now going back to Dhami's claim here for a short moment, while Article 44 does use the word state, it in, of course state includes central government and parliament, government and legislatures of the states and all other local authorities as well. It seems unlikely that one state government can implement a uniform civil code without national laws, like Uttarakhand government can't do it without national laws. The result of not having UCC right now is that the criminal laws in India are uniform and applicable equally to everybody, no matter what their religious beliefs are. But civil laws like marriage, adoption, divorce, succession, all these depend on religion of the parties. So Hindu personal law, for example, is largely codified in four acts. You can see the name of these laws on your screens. A large part of the Muslim personal law is still uncodified, but certain aspects are covered by laws. For example, there's the Muslim Personal Law Shariat Application Act 1937 and the Dissolution of Muslim Marriage Act as well. We have the Indian Christian Marriage Act and the Indian Divorce Act for Christians and the Parsi Marriage and Divorce Act for Zoroastrians. There are of course more universal laws too, which disregard religion altogether. For example, there's Special Marriage Ma Act under which inter-religion marriages can take place or even intra-religion marriages can take place. The Supreme Court has also commented on UCC in the past, of course, a few times. Take this 1985 judgment, for example, which said that a common civil code will help the na with national integration and the state has a duty to provide a uniform civil code for the citizens. But in 2018 came a report from the Law Commission which said that a uniform civil code is neither necessary nor desirable at this stage in the country, also highlighting the importance of maintaining plurality in the entire country. But the report acknowledged that they, there were discriminatory practices within different family laws in the country. So what the commission suggested in, instead was, it said that the way to move forward could be to codify all personal laws. It also said that some changes to marriage and divorce laws that may be uniform across the country can be implemented. For example, raising marriageable age of uh, girls and boys to 18 years. The government, as we know, did try to bring in this amendment to change the marriageable age of boys and girls to 21 years, but this law hasn't been passed yet. The report also suggested that a ban on polygamy, that is marrying more than one person, should be applied to all communities, including Muslims. It said that this wasn't being suggested just because of moral questions surrounding this, but because only a man is permitted to have multiple uh, wives, which the report said is unfair. But the commission reserved its recommendations on polygamy at that time, specifically because a petition demanding a ban on polygamy is currently pending in the Supreme Court. That's all I have for you right now. This is Apurva Mandhani for The Print. For more such videos, do subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook.